Well, hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe video and our advice and insights podcast for you listeners. I am going to be speaking a bit today about a subject near and dear to my heart, and that is the causation of recessions. And so our advice this week is going to be centered around how one wants to think about recession risk, given the corporate profit environment that we're in. And, and in terms of those of you watching the video that are used to seeing more than one topic covered, um, we're going to address this pretty thoroughly. Uh, and, and it's the uh, big subject that we cover in the Dividend Cafe. However, I do think there were some other matters about interest rates, about the bond market, about CapEx, about the Fed that we'll want to drive you to the DividendCafe.com. But um, in, ter- in terms of this subject about corporate profits, it, it is important to me because we are so heavily engulfed right now in discussion about the yield curve. And the kind of basic setup of this is that the short end of the curve has risen so much where you have a higher interest rate for shorter dated bonds and you uh, have not really seen the longer end of the curve go up at all. So that dynamic is what they call a flattening of the yield curve because you would expect it to be a lower interest rate at a three-year bond and a higher interest rate at a 10-year bond. And when that spread between the two comes together, uh, the people watching the video have such an advantage right now because they can see me moving my hands. The podcasters don't quite get that, but you get what I'm saying, I think. The the issue is that you end up with... um, Uh, a message in the bond market that there is a low degree of confidence in the economy and uh, generally what is called inversion is where the lower uh, shorter term rates come up higher than the longer term rates and all of a sudden you can get paid more money for a one or two year bond than you can for a 10 year bond that's not really the way the universe is supposed to work in a normalized environment for obvious reasons, I hope. Uh, generally, the principle is that the longer one is away from their money, the more they expect to be compensated for such. Uh, and so there's a kind of meme going around right now, which is 100% accurate, that 100% of the time the yield curve is inverted we have gone into recession sometimes about a year later, as much as two years later. I've been making the point a lot this year that yield curve inversion is not a great forecaster of the timing of a recession because it can, it can kind of vary as to how long it ends up taking place based on a variety of other circumstances. So with all of this discussion, and it is ad nauseum in the media, about what an inverted yield curve would mean and people that are sort of speculating as to how it may or may not affect uh, Federal Reserve decision making, you have this general narrative that's baked in that um, if indeed we see an inversion of the yield curve, it means it's only a matter of time until the economy goes into recession. I think that's fair enough. Um, But there is no guarantee the yield curve will invert, and there's a number of reasons why it very well could not. And if it were to, we don't really know if that means maybe two, two and a half years till another recession. So in theory, saying yield curve inversion is a sign of potential recession, you could be talking about something three, four, five years away, which is hardly much of a prediction. But there's another factoid in the corporate profits uh, conversation that is going to kind of complicate this discussion. For just as much as a yield curve inversion has always meant a recession coming in some period of time, never at any point in American history have we had a recession when corporate profit growth was growing. Right now, corporate profits are not just growing, they're growing at record levels. So to the extent that we're experiencing 20% year-over-year growth, 7 or 8% quarter-over-quarter growth. You have uh, absolute bull market in corporate profits, which is itself a, historically speaking, 100% indicator that a recession is not coming. So there are conflicting data points or factoids 
potentially uh, in tension with one another. And where do these corporate profits come from uh, right now, the corporate profit growth we're experiencing, and what is the outlook for their continuation? For surely those worried about yield curve inversion have to admit that um, it is a, at best, gray area because of the complexity around global bond yields, around the Federal Reserve balance sheet. There are so many levers by which the yield curve very well may not invert. Um, however, the corporate profits picture, it's not very complicated. Uh, there's a huge boost to corporate profits from corporate tax reform, the fact that companies are paying between 30 and 40 percent less in taxes than they were prior. That's a pretty big boost to earnings, wouldn't you say? But then you also have this extraordinary revenue growth that is leading to higher top line sales, therefore higher bottom line results and higher profit margins. Um, so what is the sustainability of that? Well, corporate tax reform is, is baked in for a good long time. And you also have um, GDP growth starting to grow. Uh, if GDP growth proves to be very short-lived, maybe the profit growth dies off sooner than we think. But as long as profits are growing to this extreme, um, I think that that's the story investors ought to pay the most attention to. Do I believe the Fed is desirous of an inverted yield curve? Of course not. I do not. There's an argument that maybe they're willing to tolerate it, which is different than saying they're desirous of it. But I, I, uh, I stand by our reasoning and our forecasting and our discounting of likelihoods. I think that you have a virtually 100% chance, not quite 100, of a quarter point rate hike in September. And then right now it's roughly about 60% chance in December if you follow the Fed futures market. And I think that sounds about right. It's something a little bit over half that they will raise again in December. That could end up inverting the yield curve. Um, if you get enough capex and enough productivity and, and, there, and a little wage growth, you could see the long end of the curve have interest rates go higher and that could very well delay an inverted yield curve because it pushes, it, it steepens things a little because the long end becomes a little more uh, expensive uh, from a yield standpoint. So I hope that this all makes sense. It's, it's important. If it, it, the, the reason it's important is that there is a kind of binary and simplistic viewpoint that I worry some people are putting investment positions around of if yield curve does this, I'm doing this. But I think you want to look at why it does what it does and when, under what circumstances. So you have to look at Fed, you have to look at CapEx, and you have to look at how it's impacting productivity and therefore profit growth in the economy. If you're bullish or if you're wondering what the bullish argument is, as I've laid out, I think, quite extensively this year, it basically goes like that that companies right now have wind in their sales because of corporate tax reform, and that the next two to three inning extension of the bull market could come if indeed some of the benefits of that are going into capital expenditures and business investment that lead to a second wave of productivity, which then itself leads to enhanced profitability. And profitability, uh, let alone growing profitability, is always and forever bullish for stocks. That would be the thesis on the bull side. What the bear side could say is not that they disagree with what I've said, but just that it won't happen. Yes, if it does, it will mean this and this, but we're just simply forecasting it won't. So that's something to think about. So our advice this week is to look at a full orbed understanding of the yield curve of CapEx uh, before formulating a simplistic understanding of what it means to the present economic strength and what it means to the, the bull market that we're in. And our insights are that there has never been a recession when corporate profits were growing higher, their year-over-year -year growth. So uh, these are the things we're paying attention to. I hope you find both our advice and insights helpful. I thank those of you that are uh, listening to the podcast uh, for listening, and I hope you'll subscribe to the Advice and Insights podcast. 
um, and and even write us a nice little review. Um, and for those watching the Dividend Cafe video, uh, if you're wondering where we are, by the way, we're in one of our, our the conference center at our office. Just uh, had we're taping in a different place this week. Um, but dividendcafe.com uh, for the full weekly commentary covers a lot of different subjects. Check it out. Some good charts, things of that nature. Okay, I got to leave it there. I'm off to New York. Thank you for listening. Thank you for viewing. And we will see you and talk to you next week. Thank you.